Does the world really need another Milwaukee LED light? Let's find out what you think. This is the Milwaukee 2128. You can get it as a dash 21 or dash 22. That's right, you can't get it as a dash 20. Anyway, if you know their model numbers, then you understand what that means. A dash 20 is usually bare tool. So why can't you get this as a bare tool? We'll talk about that in a moment. This is quickly becoming my favorite light. Well, not really my favorite light kind of of all time. It's not the goat, but it is my favorite handheld light now. It is kind of a uh, pushed one off the throne, if you will, but very close, very close. Anyway, this is a really cool light and there's several reasons why and everything's not here right in front of you. Now let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at the details and features of this light as well as the other stuff that I'm alluding to. And then we'll come back, well, first we'll use it. We'll talk about all the details and we'll use it a little bit. Maybe even turn off the lights for you to make sure that nobody's complaining that we didn't turn off the lights to review a light. Anyway, and then we'll come back and talk about pricing and warranty and what we thought of it. We've got the new Milwaukee 2128 and they're calling this uh, the stick light. Well, specifically, they're calling it the Red Lithium USB 3.0 stick light. Uh, so this actually runs on the uh, USB 3.0 cells and we'll pull those out here in one second or pull that out. It's just one cell uh, in there. 550 total lumens of light. Uh, and it says it has four different modes. Really, you could argue that it has eight different modes because basically you can turn on either panel. Uh, you can also turn on both panels and then you can also turn on the inspection light or the uh, or the the flashlight, if you will. So you can turn on this one, you can turn on this one, you can turn on both, and you can turn on this. And then you have low and high in each one of those modes as well. And one cool thing I like about this light that makes it simple, and that's by adding buttons. In other words, you don't have to fumble through a single button to hold press and hold longer and, and all that. You have a power button that turns on and off. So whatever you left it on, that's what it's going to come back to. Uh, then you have a mode button. It's going to change the mode. So it went from single panel to both panels, then to the inspection light or the flashlight. Uh, and then uh, if you hit it again, it goes back to the front side, back to the back side, and then back to both. And so again, if I leave it in that and I turn it off, when I turn it back on, it's going to go back to that mode. And then, as I, and then we also have a brightness button or the high-low button. So that's high. That's low, and that's all that's going to do is cycle through that. So you have a brightness button, you have a mode button, and you have a power button. Now listen, on a smaller light, I get it to have a single button, but on a larger light where you have plenty of room, I like to see those different buttons because, again, I don't have to fumble through pushing a button and not knowing whether I need to hold it or hold it longer or that sort of thing. We also get 220 degrees of rotation. We can use the light just like that, kind of in its compact state or we can flip it all the way back this way. And so we could use just this panel shining this way. We could flip it this way and just have that panel shining that way. Or in this case where both panels are going. Um, and I don't believe there's, yeah, there's not a mode where it turns on the inspection light and the, uh, no, just the inspection light comes on by itself. I call that the flashlight. They call it inspection light. Anyway, regardless, that's the little end light there on the end. Also like the, uh, the power indicator here, the ring around the power button, that's telling us the charge status on the light. So when I turn it off or turn it on, it gives me a green, yellow, or red ring, letting me know kind of the charge status of that battery that's on board. Now we got to see this when we were at Milwaukee for their, uh, it's not NPS anymore, it's Pipeline, the Pipeline event. Uh, which was awesome. If you didn't see that, then make sure you check out that video. Um, but one of the things I really liked about this light, there's several things. In fact, it's becoming my favorite asterisk, big asterisk, but uh, one of my favorite lights. Anyway, the charge port right here, now we're USB type C. And we hear that may be kind of going down the line to all their lights. We hope to see that. Uh, but anyway, I can put plug directly in uh, USB type C and charge this light directly with a USB Type-C, which is awesome. 
Uh, but there's also another way we can charge as well, and I'll show you that here in one moment. Now, as far as the base of the light, we can use a magnet that's here on the base. We can also flip out this chrome hook and hang the light if we need to, and then obviously it will stand on its base or we can hold it. So it's a very versatile light. No, it's not small enough to put in your shirt pocket or anything. In fact, let's take a measurement on it. Uh, looking at a little over seven and a half inches. Um, and widest point, you know, right at two and an eighth of an inch. Um, so it's not a large light, but at the same time, like I said, it's not like you're gonna throw it in your pocket. It's not that small. It's not a pin light, but it is a very handy light. It is also IP54 rated, so for dust and water intrusion. And you'll see here on the base, if I grab the base and twist it, just kind of a quarter turn, you see from the lock to the unlock, and then I can pull the cell out. And now I can charge the cell if I have a charger for that, which we will show you something here in one moment. Or as I mentioned, or as we shown, uh, we could actually throw it here in the light and charge it there in the light as well. Light up our dots again, turn that quarter turn and locks it down. I believe there's an O-ring in here. Yeah, there's a rubber gasket there. No, I do not see an O-ring on the uh, just this rubber here that I guess is doing the sealing. Now while I throw the scale under here just to get a weight on it, uh, you do get two hours of runtime. So on that single battery on high, so at 550 lumens, you're going to get two hours of runtime. And all in, you're still less than a pound on this. So 14 ounces, 13.8 ounces for the light and the battery. Now one of the coolest things about this light is not even the light. Uh, I'm bringing a piece of steel over here just to talk about a couple of things. Um, number one, I talked about my favorite light and that's this underbody light here, which is absolutely awesome. Uh, flexes in several different positions and it has the magnet bar here where you can put sockets and nuts and bolts and has the magnetic base here. Anyway, just an awesome light, but that's a bigger light. But this has now become my favorite handheld light because it used to be this one here, which is the Rover, which is still an awesome light. Uh, but I'm telling you, this one has taken the cake and, and I'll show you why. Not just because it's a light, but this right here. And this is the magnetic charging dock. And it does a few things. Number one, it can be a charger. See our USB-C port right there. I can put my USB-C port in there. And then the base is magnetized, so it sticks right there to the steel. And then the light can magnetize to the base. So there you have it. So pretty cool now that not only can I throw my light there on the base and it's magnetized to the steel to my toolbox, uh, you also have some screw holes there. So if you want to use keyholes, if you want to put some screws on the wall and mount it that way, you could do that as well. So I'm not only charging the flashlight, but I'm also charging an extra cell as well. And we see the indicator that's green here on the cell. And then if I look here on the light, that also gives me a green indicator. So if it were charging, you know, uh, it, if it were dead, it would show me red and the same on the, on the separate cell right here. Now I will say, I don't know if this is gonna get easier, but getting this cell out is kind of a pain and uh, as well as getting it in. So you put the base in and then slide that in. It clicks in pretty hard, which I guess the argument could be it's not gonna fall out, but to get that out is a bit of a task. It can be done and I'm making it harder than it looks. I can actually usually get that out pretty easily, but anyway, or not easily, but it does take a little getting used to of kind of fine tuning how you put that in as well as how you pull it out. So just understand that. I'm sure that will loosen up, but it is very tight. I guess it would be worse if it were too loose and, and falling out. But that's one thing I love about this is this charger here. And you see the little contacts right there with the contacts here on the light. So that now is my favorite handheld light. Let's go use it a little bit, see what we think. Now it's actually dark outside right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to kill the lights in the shop. 
I think one of our emergency lights might stay on. Okay, we've got all lights off. It's pretty dark in here. Um, people ask a lot of times when I'm reviewing a light, they say, well, how are you reviewing a light when the lights are on? Which I think most of the time you're working on vehicles, you typically have lights on. Uh, but I get it. I get it. We want to see kind of uh, the light format and uh, the, uh, the cone of the light and so forth. So let's go ahead and run through the modes here. So there's the, uh, I don't know if you call that the backside panel. I turned that around to be the front, but anyway, that's one side panel. And that I believe is high. Let's switch it on the other panel first. There we go. And then we'll try the, nope, there's high. So there's high. So pretty good light spread there. And there's low. And there's the other panel, which is going to be the same in low and high. And then that's both. So if we wanted to hang it up using both panels, we can turn that whatever way we want to with that hook. That hook swivels on there. Or use the magnet as well. Then we can go to the flashlight. So the flashlight's definitely more of a direct kind of a spotlight effect, kind of a spotlight effect versus a, uh, a floodlight. And does give some nice direct lighting where we can really kind of see what we're looking at. Give you a little different view here. So this is one side on high. There's low. There's high. There's low. And then there's that flashlight. Or inspection light, as they're calling it. Still green. You're probably sitting there going, Tim, I don't get it. What is the big deal? I don't know. There's several big deals of it. Number one, as I mentioned, I like the individual buttons on this light. Uh, I like the flexibility of it. I like that it's kind of an in-betweener, meaning it's not just a little tiny flashlight or pin light that I can find things, but that it's going to cross over as kind of a small job light as well as can be an inspection light. So if you're walking out to check something out, you can use it. Also, if you're changing a radiator hose, you're changing a fan belt, you're changing a, a spark plug, something kind of a, a single pass item, if you will, this would be a great light. You hang it up, you stick it on the hood, uh, whatever it might be, and you can do your job with it as well. Um, or it can be that inspection light for you and the versatility of, again, not having to pull out a cell to charge it. Can if I want to, uh, but then I can just throw it on that dock. I think without the dock, I'm not raving about this light, or maybe a little bit, but it's definitely not, you know, taking the throne of my other personal favorite kind of handheld light, which was the Rover. I still love this, but I love the docking station here. I also am so glad to see we're going to Type-C on the USB. I think that's the smart thing to do. I think everything should be going to that. Anyway, regardless, I don't want to have that argument here. Um, but decent output with this as well, 550 lumen. Again, it's going to give you good spread uh, with the front or the back, as well as the inspection light. You can use that as well as more of a spotlight. Uh, price on this is $99 for the Dash 21. And the reason it's a Dash 21 and not a Dash 20 is because it actually comes with that cell, with the USB 3.0 cell. So it comes with this and the light, that's 99 bucks, and you get a lifetime warranty. The battery is not lifetime warranty, but the, the flashlight is. It's also drop rated at six feet as well, uh, so shouldn't have an issue with if you have to, that's the only, only thing, I, I can never line these batteries up right. I always try to do it too quick. Um, anyway, yeah, so it's drop rated as well, and it still should work. So lifetime warranty on that, just not on the battery. $99 for the light, $159 if you want the light and the charger, which would be the 2128-22. So check these out. They should be hitting the shelves in about a week or so. So definitely this month, September of 2022, 
we should actually see these hitting the shelves and you can order them online. We'll have a link in the description. So let us know what you think about this little light. Let, let me know if you think I'm an idiot. And that's absolutely fine. People usually do every time we drop a video. I'm used to it. Anyway, uh, if you don't mind, would you follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and even TikTok? And if you haven't done so already, would you hit that like and subscribe button? And by all means, if you hated our video, then give us a thumbs down. But would you let us know in the comments why? Have a great day and keep smiling.